Henry. God bless Anthony Perkins. The man had a bit of a career going as an awkward but charming heartthrob before Alfred Hitchcock etched him into cinema history with the groundbreaking role of Norman Bates in Psycho. Perkins had difficulty getting out from under the role, taking an extended break from Hollywood before the 1968 film Pretty Poison. He'd reprised the role of Norman in 1983 for the surprisingly great sequel Psycho 2. As his feature film career wound down, it started to get more and more bizarre with Ken Russell's psychedelic sex romp Crimes of Passion and this film, a mix of Robert Louis Stevenson's novella The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the real-life Jack the Ripper killings, shot in Ken Russell's style. The film is a campy mess, but Perkins' performance still manages to captivate. The film opens with Henry Jekyll as a young boy spying on his father committing adultery with a young woman. His father catches him and whips him with a belt, thus cementing Henry's general impotency and fascination with sadomasochism. Fast forward to the late 1800s, Jekyll is now a successful doctor preparing to unveil a new cocaine-based anesthetic. You don't want to use morphine as well? No need. His way too patient wife, Elizabeth, played by Glennis Barber, supports him, but when a lab accident mixes cocaine and ether into a noxious gas, Jekyll turns into his own lecherous id, Jack Hyde. If you think that's a goof and that his name should be Edward, well, that's the twist of the film. I got my own place. It's more private. Let's go. You're in for a hard time of it. Just keep smiling. Perkins' transition here, by the way, is one of the highlights of the film. Just as Perkins' Norman Bates was believably prim and proper, if tightly wound, and his mother was crassly malevolent, so too is his Dr. Jekyll, stodgy and repressed, while his Hyde is only a step above monosyllabic. Perkins plays Hyde with a protruding lower lip that threatens to stream drool at any minute, and a lowered gaze reminiscent of Kubrick. Jekyll can't remember what happened the night before, but he tells Elizabeth that his work is very important and that he must continue to work through the night. Of course, if you've seen Hamilton, you know that choosing work over spending time with your wife never leads to anything good. No, no, Hyde begins to frequent a brothel, making friends with the middleman pimp and a few of his girls. Of course, this is before he isolates the girls and kills them. Still love me. Yeah, of course I do. Liar. It's in these scenes where the film gets a bit too uncomfortable to be entertaining. In one scene, Hyde becomes enamored with a young woman's ass, and in another, he makes a woman masturbate with a cane in front of her neighbor. The film is supposed to be risque and decadent, of course, but these scenes come off as desperate to shock rather than organic pieces of the narrative. Jekyll sets about covering Hyde's tracks while also beginning to adopt a bit of his anarcho-fascist spirit. One of the better scenes in the film comes when Jekyll tells a group of his uptight friends that the social contract is meaningless if he's too powerful to be controlled. You all act as if our manners, our morality, were handed down to us by God. But they are. No, madam, they're not. We made them up by mutual agreement. But what if I don't agree? What then? I clap you in irons and throw you in prison. Straight off. You'll have to catch me first. Hyde enlists the help of a pair from the brothel, whom he plies with his cocaine and ether concoction. Meanwhile, Elizabeth begins to suspect that Jekyll is up to more than just helping desperate women at the hospital. This all leads to the surprisingly standard battle between the final girl and the monster Jekyll has created. You didn't think I was dead, did you? Edge of Sanity has disappointingly few things to recommend about it, but one of those things is Perkins' unhinged performance as Hyde. He's not quite the animalistic lout he is in other adaptations. Instead, he's just simply Jekyll minus the chains of the social contract. Gwyneth Barber also does well as Elizabeth, but she doesn't have much to do outside of being the concerned wife, who eventually turns into a final girl. I will say this. This film is gorgeous. The nighttime blue hues come across amazingly well on the Shout Factory Blu-ray, and the pallid tone of Hyde's skin really drives home his subhuman nature. The biggest problem with the film is that it comes off as so achingly edgy, it's like it was written by a wannabe edgelord trying out his stuff on 8chan. Sometimes films are shocking due to the nature of their plot or their subject matter, but Edge of Sanity desperately wants to make its audience recoil for no greater purpose. 
The result is a film that descends into camp without the usual fun.